Modern smartphones are awesome, but the cognitive fatigue from constant context switching between different apps and the infinite scroll has led many to consider more analog options, like the pocket notebook. Now, pocket notebooks are awesome, but there are a lot of different styles and lots of different methods to keep pocket notebooks. Which one is best for you? Hey, welcome to Park Notes. I'm Parker Sedecase. I'm a philosopher and theologian, and this is a channel where I help you study and think more deeply. In this video, I'm going to answer the question, which pocket notebook is best? That is, which pocket notebook is best for you? So I'm going to help you answer this question, but in order to do so, I'm going to lay out three types of pocket notebooks, three categories of pocket notebooks. Now, within these three categories, there are many different methods that you can go about keeping a pocket notebook. So after I lay out these three categories, I'll show you different methods that you can use within each. I should say these are categories that I made up. So if you think there's a fourth or a fifth, let me know in the comments. I always learn so much from you guys. Now, right off the bat, the three categories are pretty easy to understand. First, there's pocket notebooks for self-mastery. This style of pocket notebooks will help you control your life, manage your time, and help you exert dominion over yourself. The second style of pocket notebooks are external idea collections. That is collecting ideas that were not generated by you, but by others. You collect these ideas and sayings and proverbs in order to reflect on them throughout the day. And you keep them in your pocket notebook so you always have them with you. And the third type of pocket notebook are internal idea collections. This is where you collect your own ideas, your own thoughts, into a pocket notebook, or you actually use the pocket notebook itself to help generate your own ideas. So that's it. It's really simple. Pocket notebooks for self-mastery, pocket notebooks for collecting other people's thoughts, and pocket notebooks for collecting and generating your own thoughts. But there's still more to say, including practical examples. So make sure you watch the full video so you know which pocket notebook is best for you. This video is sponsored by Lingoda, but more on that later. Let's jump right in. Okay, so first things first, there are three kinds of pocket notebooks, three categories of pocket notebooks. The first one is self-mastery. The second is external reflection, inspiration, contemplation. And the third one is internal ideation. Now, these are fancy words. If you know me, you know I like fancy words. But I'm going to break it down for us. It's not that difficult. Self-mastery pocket notebooks are going to help you organize your day and help you rule over yourself. The external reflection, inspiration, contemplation notebooks are going to be a collection of thoughts and ideas from thinkers that you admire and you respect, thinkers who have something important to say, which you want to reflect on yourself throughout the day. And the internal ideation types of pocket notebooks are going to be for yourself. These are for your own ideas, whether it's collecting your own ideas or generating your own ideas. So it's really that simple. Which pocket notebook is best? Well, it depends which one of these three is most important to you. Do you need a notebook for mastering yourself, keeping track of your day, staying on track, being productive? Do you need a notebook for reflection, inspiration, contemplation? Do you need to collect quotes to help motivate you throughout the day, to give you something sagacious to be pondering on throughout the day? Or do you need more of a blank canvas for you to paint your own thoughts on and collect and keep track of your own ideas? Now, perhaps you want some kind of blend of the three, and that's cool too. Sometimes people ask me, can I do this? Can I do that? Can I mix and match? Yes, you can. I'm not the, the notebook police. No one's looking over your shoulder, making sure you follow exactly what I do. These are just some categories that I've come up with along the way to help me think about pocket notebooks and hopefully help you decide which one's best, whether it's one of these three or some combination of the three. So let's start first with internal ideation notebooks. The second and third type of pocket notebooks, they're going to all deal with mentalia. That is thoughts, notions, concepts, percepts, ideas, impressions, schemas, etc. These are mental things. These are for collecting mental events, whether they're someone else's, like the external, or whether they're your own, like the internal. You're collecting intentional mental states. Now, it's debatable whether all thoughts or all mental states are intentional or not, but intentional means directed. It means they have intentionality. They're about something. And so these are mental processes, which include thinking, reasoning, imagining, and are all sequences of of intentional mental states. So you have a mental state like a thought. When those are strung together, that's a mental process called thinking. Or if you're reasoning, it's called reasoning. Or if you're imagining something, it's called imagining. So strings of mental states are going to be mental processes. And depending on what those look like, they'll be called different things. The kind of mental states and mental processes which are collected in the third type of pocket notebook 
in the internal ideation type of notebook. These are going to be propositional attitudes. Now, I know these are a lot of big words uh, and maybe it's unnecessary, but I want to lure you into philosophy. So I won't spend a whole ton of time on this, but this is a channel where I help you study and think more deeply. So yes, it is kind of a Trojan horse for philosophy. I have to slip that in just a little bit, but I'll be brief. So a propositional attitude is a mental state which has a proposition as its content or as its object. So here I drew a really bad picture of it, but there's a proposition. It's this little rectangle thing. I always think of propositions as being rectangles. But let's say that that's the proposition, the cat is on the mat. Now this cloudy thing, this is my thought. This is my propositional attitude about the proposition, the cat is on the mat. And let's say the attitude I'm taking towards this proposition is that of believing. I believe the proposition that the cat is on the mat. So here's my thought, and here's the object of my thought, the proposition, or it's the content of my thought. The cat is on the mat, that's a proposition, and I have this propositional attitude about the proposition. I believe it. I believe that it's true. And when it comes to propositional attitudes, there's a lot of different kinds. There's believing, hoping, desiring, predicting, wishing, fearing, loving, suspecting, expecting, and, and lots more. Philosophers divide propositional attitudes into two kinds, cognitive and connotative. Cognitive is belief-like cognitive is desire-like. These belief-like ones that are cognitive, they're said to have a mind-to-world direction of fit. So a belief is true if and only if the world is the way it is believed to be. So my belief that the cat is on the mat is true if and only if the cat actually is on the mat. If that state of affairs is obtaining, if that fact is true. If the cat actually is on the mat, then my belief is true and the proposition which is the content or object of my propositional attitude of believing, is true. Now, cognitive propositional attitudes, which are desire-like, this is a world-to-mind direction of fit instead of a mind-to-world direction of fit. A desire is satisfied if and only if the world comes to be the way it is desired to be and is otherwise unsatisfied. So a desire is fulfilled if the world changes to match that desire, and a belief is true if it ends up matching the way the world already is. So here I'm assuming the classical view on propositional attitudes presented by figures like Gottlob Frege and Bertrand Russell. There's also a dispositional view and a computational slash representational view, but that's way too deep. I'm just going to assume the classical view and you can fight me in the comments. So we can share our beliefs with each other. Now, what makes that true? When I share a belief with you, it's not like mental sharing. I'm not having your belief. I'm not having your mental event. You have a mental event and it's different than mine. How is it that we both can share our beliefs? Well, your belief and my belief have the same propositional content. So you believe that the cat is on the mat and I believe that the cat is on the mat. We're both affirming or believing the same propositional content. The proposition that the cat is on the mat, even though you and I have have different mental events. Maybe yours is happening after mine, or it's happening in a different skull than mine, or in a different soul or mind than mine, and yet it has the same content. We express our beliefs and the same propositional content to each other through our language. This is done through words and sentences, either written or verbal or however else we're doing it. But the same proposition can be expressed in different languages. So the cat is on the mat. This is an English sentence which expresses that proposition. But we could also switch it to Spanish and I could butcher it like el gato está en la alfombra. I'm sure I'm not getting that right. For those of you aware of my podcast, I pronounce it Parker's Pensies even though it should be Parker's Pensee. On this channel, you've heard me say Leuch term or Leuch term and just totally botched the German there. And my Spanish speaking barber knows that I butcher Spanish all the time. But thankfully I found Lingoda. Lingoda is a language school with 1100 teachers, live Zoom classes available 24 seven, with small groups of native level teachers and guided curriculum for fast progress. They offer curriculum in German, English, business English, French, and Spanish. So as I continue to take classes from Lingoda, I'll be able to pronounce these things more accurately as time goes on. I'm just getting started with Lingoda, so come join me and we can learn to pronounce these different sentences, which all express the same propositional content. And right now, Lingoda is offering the language sprint course, which starts on January 15th. This is crazy. Check this out. In the sprint challenge, you take 30 lessons in 60 days. And upon successful completion, you get 50% cash back or 30 credits towards future classes. Now, I know a lot of you guys are ultra learners and you're going to love that. But for the ultra super learners, there's also the super sprint challenge. In this challenge, you take 60 lessons in 60 days and you get 50% cash back or 60 credits upon successful completion. 
you know and I know that setting a challenge for yourself is the best way to accelerate your learning. So join the Lingoda Language Sprint and hit the ground running in 2024. This is a method that will truly help you reach your New Year's resolutions and level up your language skills. Use my link try.lingoda.com slash parknotes for up to 30% off and use code parknotes for an additional $25 off. You guys are going to love this. Come join me and embark on your own language learning journey. You can find my link in the pinned comments or check the video description. So after that language sprint, hopefully all of us can start pronouncing these sentences more accurately and, and express the proposition, which is the content for all of them. So that's a bit about propositions and propositional attitudes. These are going to be captured by your internal ideation pocket notebooks. Some of the ways that you can keep an internal ideation pocket notebook include keeping a pocket notebook journal or an idea catch-all, a diary, or a manuscript commonplace book. Now, right now I'm using this Leuchtturm 1917 A6 hardback pocket notebook with a Norman Kahn original leather cover. This is my idea catch-all. And so I'm using this primarily to catch all the ideas that I don't want to forget throughout the day. I keep this with me at most times. When I have a good idea, I put it in here and then before bed, I will abstract that idea out and put it into the other notebooks wherever it needs to go. I reflect on this throughout the day, and this is probably my favorite way to keep a pocket notebook. So again, this is an idea catch-all. But you can also keep a pocket notebook as a journal. Journals are just collections of your ideas, but it's going to be a little bit more intentional than a catch-all. An idea catch-all is just Here's an idea, I'm throwing it in here where a journal entry is gonna be more thoughtful. I have an idea, but let me expand on that idea a little bit more. A journal entry may take up two, three, four, five pages of your pocket notebook. Now a pocket diary is gonna be very similar to a pocket journal, but the way I think of a diary is a collection of time-bound emotions. So a diary is gonna collect your cognitive, desire-like, world-to-mind, direction of fit, propositional attitudes. Wishing, fearing, loving, suspecting. I want things to be this way. This is how I am feeling about X, Y, or Z. I'm hoping things change. Whereas the pocket journal is going to be the cognitive, belief-like, mind-to-world, direction-of-fit, propositional attitude. I think this about the world. I think this about X, Y, and Z. I could be right or I could be wrong. But what determines whether it's right or wrong is actually the world itself. What determines whether or not my desire is fulfilled is whether the world changes in the direction of my desire. This is actually my contemplatio. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that Latin wrong, but you heard me pronounce the other things. That's why I'm using Lingoda and asking you guys in the comments to help me pronounce it correctly. Now, this pocket notebook is somewhere between a compendium and a manuscript commonplace book. I'm collecting quotes and ideas. I'm adding my own marginalia. I'm reflecting on them, and a lot of these will turn into Substack posts. If you guys want to follow my Substack, find the link in the description. It's called Parker's Ponderings. But this contemplatio can also serve as an external pocket notebook. These kinds of notebooks are collections of other people's ideas, of other people's thoughts, of quotes and aphorisms and sayings and proverbs, gnomic statements. These are quotes from sages and scientists and philosophers, and they inspire you to think more deeply or to be a better person, to live valiantly and courageously, or to be kind and courteous when you're not. These are reminders for you. So here I have things like my contemplatio and commonplace books and compendiums, but the distinction here is that these are external ideas. These are other people's ideas and thoughts and phrases and quotes that you collect together into one place in order to reflect on throughout your day. You keep it in your pocket so it's always with you. And when you're bored or tempted to pull out your phone and ignite that infinite scroll, you turn to your pocket notebooks for motivation and inspiration instead. Additionally, in the external reflection, inspiration, contemplation kind of pocket notebook, I might include a notebook like my Field Notes Expedition Notebook. This is a waterproof notebook, and this is where I take a lot of my initial jujitsu notes. I use this waterproof pocket notebook during class. It has to be waterproof because I sweat a lot, and I don't want to destroy my notes, but I'll take them in here and then abstract them out later and put them into a larger moleskin notebook. But these are instructions from my professors, from my jujitsu coaches, and a lot of them are personalized instructions for me to get better at my own jujitsu. I can bring this with me throughout the day and I can ruminate, reflect on jujitsu moves and practice in my head. That might be a little too obsessive for some of you, but anyone who does a sport knows that that type of obsession is what helps you get better. Practice doesn't stop when the official practice stops. 
You continue to learn by reflecting on the moves of the day, the personalized instruction that your coach gave you, and even reflecting how you did in various rounds. I think taking notes for just about any sport is going to help you become a better athlete. Now, this isn't a pocket notebook per se, but it is the book of Proverbs in a pocket form. This is a saddleback pocket Proverbs. It's the whole book of Proverbs in the NET translation. It's a good translation. And these are also waterproof pages. I love this. It's like a pocket notebook, but it's already been filled in for you. This is actually the inspiration for my own pocket notebook book of Proverbs, my own pocket Proverbs, where I collect gnomic statements and Proverbs and sayings and aphorisms and words of the wise. And lastly, the third category or kind of pocket notebook is that of self-mastery. Here we're using a pocket notebook not necessarily to reflect on someone else's thoughts or ideas or wisdom, and we're not necessarily using a pocket notebook to generate our own ideas, but instead we're using it to manage our day, to manage our life, to make sure we're staying on track with our work, with our family, with whatever time we're given. We're trying to harness that to be productive. So here I have my bullet journal slash time block log. I've made a video about this one as I have with many others, and this is exactly what it sounds like. It's a cross between a bullet journal and Cal Newport style time block logging. I use this to map out my day, track my daily tasks, to track daily metrics like my weight when I'm getting ready for a jiu-jitsu competition, to make sure I actually shut down and stop working for the day, and to collect some ideas or thoughts if I don't have the other pocket notebooks with me at the time. You only have so many pockets, right? A second notebook I have for self-mastery is my pocket notebook for dastardly plans. This is a Panama notebook. It's from Smythson of Bond Street, and this is as close as I could get to Moriarty's notebook from Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows. If you remember, that's how Sherlock Holmes beat Moriarty. He found his little pocket notebook. It was in Actually, Oslo when I first caught a glimpse of your little notebook, red leather bound from Smythson of Bond Street. Rook to King's Rook 3, check. So I like Moriarty. I like villains. He's the man. And so this is my book of dastardly plans. Here I just have some guiding quotes for the notebook, including one from Game of Shadows. With, With an empire, empire so enormous, enormous even, you even you must keep a record, record of it somewhere. it somewhere. And that's Sherlock Holmes to Moriarty. So in this notebook, I just have my master plan for all my social media and public philosophy projects. I have like six or seven YouTube channels. I have a sub stack and an old blog I used to keep. And with so many things going on, I need to keep a record of it somewhere. So I plan out different integrations and different cross-pollination between YouTube channels in here, and this helps me keep track of the next videos I'm going to post, when and where, across all my platforms. I don't know how helpful that's going to be for those of you without seven YouTube channels, but many of you have lots of side projects, and you might consider having a Dastardly Plans compendium, a pocket notebook to help you keep track of all of your projects. Next up, we have catch-alls. So we already had an idea catch-all, but this is a true catch-all. This is for ideas when I don't have my idea catch-all, for tasks, for to-do lists, for feeding the dog, for daily tasks, for future tasks. Anything I don't want to forget is going in my general catch-all pocket notebook. I can take the ideas from here and I can disperse them out to my bullet journal later to my calendar. I can send those texts and emails that I need to send. I can feed the dogs and walk the dogs. I can clean my turtle tanks, everything. This is super vital to me. So there's probably more that we could squeeze in, but that's a lot of pocket notebooks. Like a lot and a lot and a lot of pocket notebooks. Like a lot of pocket notebooks. I'll leave some links in the description where you can find these pocket notebooks. Some of them will be affiliate links, so you can support my channel and my work by buying through those, and some of them even offer 10% off. I always try to find discounts for you guys when I can, because I know the obsession is real, and so many pocket notebooks can end up affecting our pocket books. All right, so that's it. That's the three categories of pocket notebooks and a couple examples for each category. Now, I want to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments which one's your favorite, or do you think you'll use a blend of two or three of these categories in your own pocket notebook? If you guys made it this far, then you're awesome. Leave me a notebook emoji in the comments so I know who the real ones are. If you like this video, leave me a like, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos on study habits and notebook obsessions and ridiculous philosophical inquiries. All right, I'll catch you next time.